Hello, this video is going to be about some of the romance art of Gray Morrow, who is one of my favorite artists. First is this story uh, from Young Love, number 82, from uh, 1970. Uh, it's a story from the cover, but the cover, unfortunately, is not by Gray Morrow. The story is called, Please, Please Make Him Forget Her. And as you can see, Gray Morrow has a unique style where he uh, kind of breaks the panels up and moves them into weird directions, different from really almost anyone else. This guy, David, is seeing this girl Claudia, but he's hung up on this other girl, Sybil. And Claudia's girlfriend is like, oh, that's Sybil, she's a piece of work, and blah, blah, blah. I love uh, Morrow's trans, trans, transposing panels, moving them around. And they're all over town, Sybil and David, but she also sees Sybil with other guys. And kind of creepy stalker-like moment. She goes to his house just to see him. Whew. And once in a while she runs into Sybil and Sybil just likes to stick in the knife and rub it in. That She's only seeing David just to keep him away from her. she is with another guy. Then one day her friend comes in, Claudia, I've got sensational news. Sybil just split from David. And 20 minutes later, she's by his side. Blah, blah, blah. How could I be so stupid? Blah, blah, blah. Claudia's there to pick up the pieces. But I loved her, Claudia. I didn't, I know, but I did. I know, darling. But that's, but it's not the end of the world. I ought to know. Please, David, let me help you forget. So they're happy together for a while. I enjoy this artwork. Oh, David, I'll never, it's like I'll never really let, it's like I never really left you. A world consisting of two people in love and you can see everyone in the room is looking at them thinking, what are those kids doing? But then as he's paying the check, she sees his, sees that he's got her picture in his wallet and that kind of blows the bubble. Get the wind blowing the leaves, nice. And she notices that when they're out driving, he drives past Sybil's house, like just, you know, kind of stalking her like she was stalking him. And pretty soon she can't take it anymore. So I have to know how you feel about Sybil. Oh, Claudia, I've been afraid to ask myself that question. And 
so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. And one day, she's out, you know, so they decide to break up, and he hasn't, she hasn't seen him for a while. Then one day, she runs into Sybil in the park, and Sybil decides to turn the knife, and she's like, oh, yeah, you're the girl who always takes out my cast-offs. And Claudia realizes that she doesn't know that uh, he hasn't, she hasn't been seeing David. So she's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get back at you. And Claudia makes some catty remarks. And so Sybil says, I'm going to call David. I've got a date, late date tonight, but tomorrow I'm going to call him up and he's going to leave you flat. And she's like, oh, man, i got to do something about this. What can I do? So she has an idea. So she calls up David and says, oh, you know, come, you got to meet me in the morning. We're going to go over to Sybil's place. So they go over and she's like, are you sure that she, she's expecting us? Yep. So she goes and knocks on the door and, uh, He's like, you know, uh, are you sure she's home? You know, wow, yes. Are you sure she expects us? And she opens the door and man, she looks like crap. Oh, Sybil. Don't you remember? You said you were thinking of inviting David over. So I thought I'd just save you the trouble. But, but I look a mess. And she's like, you vicious little sneak. You knew I was going to be out all night. I told you so. And now you brought it here just, uh, just to see what I look like. Oh, I ought to. Or we'd better get out of here, Claudia. And David was silent as a tomb until we got back in the car. She was right, wasn't she, Claudia? You deliberately wanted me to see her that way. Yes, yes, I did, deliberately. And I don't care what you, how mean you think it is. I had, and I'd do it again if I, and you know why? Because, because I wanted you, wanted that fake image of her out of your heart. So now I might have a chance. You know something, Claudia? It worked, my darling. The end. Next is this story from My Love number 14 from Marvel and it happened at Woodstock with a Gray Morrow cover and story. I came to the festival for love and music. No one told me the price of admission would be a broken heart. Very nice. And someone could fall in love here and there and anywhere, but for me, it happened at Woodstock. And there's heartbreak involved, you can tell. By Gray Morrow and Gary Friedrich. Friedrich. I don't know how he pronounced his name. So it started out in 69, the day of Woodstock, the day before Woodstock started, they hit out, they jump on the uh, Rick's motorcycle and head out. You know, I hope your your parents didn't give you a hard time. Oh, we I convinced them it was cool. So it's like, oh, it's really crowded. There's everybody's going there. So finally they get there and and he pitches a tent for her and, and she's like, oh, let's go out and meet people. He's like, oh, I'm pretty tired. As soon as I put put up this tent for you, I'm going to climb in my sleeping bag and go to sleep. And that was his big mistake. Because she's all hyped up and she decides to go out and see the, all the wild people. Look, there's a hippie and a girl and a black guy. Wow, she's never seen that before. And she's going along and so, all of a sudden somebody like grabs her arm She's like, oh, what's going on? Oh, sorry. I was just trying to be fr to do the friendly bit. Sorry I bugged you. Uh, uh, 
No, wait. Please stay and rap with me. Crazy, but before I get into something heavy, I've got to get acquainted. I mean, I never rap with anybody. I, I don't really know them until I really know them. And he takes her in his arm and kisses her like she's never been kissed before. And again, you've got the overlapping panel designs. It's distinctly Gray Morrow. Uh, and it's kind of odd for a Marvel comic, Marvel romance, because they're normally very formulaic and very stiff. So they make it and uh, spend a couple of days together there at Woodstock, listening to the music and grooving on each other. The guy's name is Flowers. And uh, so she's like falling in love with him. And they listen to the bands play and uh, they get close and even in the rain, she's like, oh, it's the it's most beautiful thing anyone ever said to me. And it helps me realize I love you. Same here, baby. This has a lot, it's got to be the ultimate trip. And they hear the music of Janis Joplin, Richie Havens, and Country Joe and the Fish. But then, she, he breaks the spell when uh, Rick, her boyfriend, catches up with her. What's going on here? And they're like, oh, well, we're just grooving. And Rick punches Pop Flowers out. And she's like, oh, wait, don't do that. We're just, uh, I can't help it. We fell in love. And we're, I'm going to New York with him. And we're going to get married. Right, Flowers? And Flowers is like, well, uh, <clears throat> tell you the truth. I was just kind of digging on you, but I don't know about getting married. So she kind of, he kind of dumps her and he's like, get out of here. So she's like, oh, Rick, I've been such a fool. Yeah, well, maybe it was worth it. Just you can say we skip the last day of the festival and go home and you can think you just, you might still have be hope for us. And well, after she had her fling, she decided to get married. And so they are, they go down and they get married. And uh, it all happened because of Woodstock. And finally, the surprise third romance story is uh, from Captain America number 144, which is really an interesting issue. The first half of it is drawn by John Romita, and the second half is by uh, Gray Morrow. This was the same year as the Woodstock story. And it's called The Falcon Fights Alone. So there had been this riot in uh, uh, the Falcon and Captain America showed up to break it up. And, they uh, gave the Falcon a hard time for being a Uncle Tom and and uh, gave him a hard time. Uh, the artwork has been redone by all the shots of Captain America and Steve Rogers have been redone by, by uh, John Romita, which is kind of a shame, but that was the Marvel way. So, Sam, the Falcon, is uh with his, with his girlfriend and captain america's like oh i'm losing my partner i gotta find out i deserve to know why so he's like creepily watching him from the window and the girl says well you know if you can't figure out how to be with your people instead of hanging out with you know with those whites and you can't be with me and he's like oh but i love you and she's like well that's just the way it is you know until you figure out some way to be more black, you know, you can forget about me. And 
was right out the window listening. Really strange. But she says, well, if you decide to get it together, you know, you're a great guy, but you know, when you decide to figure out what, how to do it right, then, you know, call me up. So she runs, she leaves, and Cap comes right in the window, and uh, Falcon doesn't seem to think it's anything strange, which I would think it was strange. So I think maybe this is Gray Morrow in this panel of Cap. I don't know for sure. But he tells him, you know, from now on, I'm going to be the superhero for my people. And he tells him off. And, uh, he's like, I'm going to prove it to you. And he throws out his old costume. And from now on, the Falcon fights alone. <clears throat> and this is his first appearance in his red outfit. And Cap's like, well, since you got a new outfit, I can see you're ready for a new thing. So I hate to see you go, but meanwhile, this kid breaks in and says, Hey, Sam, there's holy smoke. It's the Falcon and Captain America. What is it, kid? Oh, well, you know, my friend is being held captive by a couple of junkie, a couple of uh, dope pushers. And Cap's like, lead us to him. We'll take care of him. But uh, the Falcon's like, no, this is my gig. I got to take care of it myself. So Captain America's like, okay, you know, you do what you got to do. So the kid tells him, tells him where, where, where his friend's being held captive, and out the window of Falcon goes to take care of it. I don't know, I just love his artwork. It's really cool. <clears throat> so meanwhile, these two uh, no good dirt bags have got this kid in. You know, he's in bed and he's in really bad shape and they're like, well, I'm going to give you a shot that'll take you out of this world and he's getting ready to shoot the kid. When uh, the Falcon's on his way, he's hoping I'm not too late. Going through the night with the Falcon, like the way he breaks up the night there. It's cool. And he's like, I hope I'm in town. Knock it off pretty good. It'll be over for you soon. I don't know what that means. So he breaks in and uh, says, get the gun. And so Red Wing the Hawk goes and gets the gun and he kicks, kicks the guy, the one guy with the gun that was taken away. One of the other guys coming at him with a knife. Hawka, Hawka. Oh, well, I gotta look out. The Hawk warms him and he takes care of the guy with the knife. So he's like, oh, this is a bad scene. I got to get the cops in here. So he gets to a phone and calls the cops and they're like, what's going on here? Oh, there's a couple of dope dealers in there that were holding this guy captive. They were going to kill him. And uh, the, the boys got to get to the hospital. And the cops are all like, oh, thanks for calling us. We'll get right on it. <laughs> so the people are like, who's that? You know, that's, with that outfit, can't you tell? Why to handle his honky, honky hoods, baby? Way to handle his honky hoods, baby. Right on, you're our man, whoever you are. And somebody recognizes him. Hey, that's the Falcon, he's just in new clothes. And he's like, look, I know I've been kind of a, kind of a, dead lately before, but now from now on, I'm going to concentrate on my people here in the ghetto. <laughs> and they're like, yay, we got a black superhero. And there's Captain America watching up there. I think that's Gray Morrow art there. I'm pretty sure. But John Romita redrew that last panel of Steve Rogers and Cap. 
so I hope you like this uh, little uh, story of Gray Morrow and uh, if you like this video then like it and I uh, look forward to hearing your comments and uh, subscribe if you feel like it hope you enjoyed this video bye